We're here in the JNU campus with Umar and Anirban and we're going to be talking about their experience behind bars and now that they're finally out, what is happening on campus and what the impact of this attack on JNU has been. When we surrendered, a uh, day back a Supreme Court uh, order had come which had told the police that while we were in custody there should not be a scratch on our bodies. This had also come in the light of what all had happened with Comrade Kanaiya in the past few days and the way he was attacked and the way the police stood as mute spectators. So that worked in our favour in the sense that when we were in police custody, the police did not physically harm us. But that is it. They did not physically harm us, but the rest was all there. Uh, interrogation at odd hours of the day, uh, verbal abuse, in intimidation, humiliation and all of that. I mean, that you seem to expect in police custody. They extended the remand period by thrice. Uh, first they had it for three days, then for two days, then for one more day by the special cell of the Delhi police. And actually, if you see, there was nothing, no basis on which the remand periods were being extended except for the fact that they were just producing us and the magistrate was agreeing to their uh, uh, demand of us, keeping us in more custody. In fact, not just three plus two plus one, six, but actually you can add one more day. The first day when we were not produced for the uh, 20 hours, later we produced before the magistrate. It was actually a seven-day police custody. It was one of the most difficult periods of our lives, but uh, thankfully it's over. I don't know. The first six days were difficult. Uh, interrogation, I mean, police custody is not the most democratic space mm -hmm. where we could, uh, that way where we would, yeah, sorry, where we would uh, debate and uh, discuss. We still did to some extent because basically there was nothing to investigate, so to speak. There was a, it was an open program. Whatever has hap had happened had happened uh, in fr in front of everyone, and uh, it. I mean, there was nothing like ki kaha se kya hua and who what happened and where did this come from? Where did that come from? I mean, they had blown something absolutely out of proportion so there was nothing to investigate so to speak so yeah i mean actually a large part of this stay was about getting sermons regarding nationalism uh, every person like uh, we heard that there were nationalism classes going on in jnu and over there also i think a lot of class we underwent whoever would uh, get a chance would uh, give us a dose of nationalism uh, of course, abuses, inter I mean, interrogations interrupted with, uh, there was a lot of hatred, of course. Uh, I mean, I think uh, much more than uh, criminals, rapists, th uh, thieves, decoys, uh, scamsters, uh, we seemed are worse than them. Uh, so, that's how in the, it was in the police custody, but uh, amongst the lot, special cell was uh, something which was more intimidatory, of course, much more intimidating. intimidating. Of course, but as he was say saying that uh, not a scratch was as per High Court orders, and we also feel our class background, our uh, that fact that we were students in JNU, the fact that there was a media hype, and the fact that lots of civil society and intellectuals were behind us, I mean, we were we would say that ki these things played a part in the fact that ki as to how bad or worse we were being treated. Had we been something else, had we not been students of JNU, had we uh, not been uh, scholars or PhD scholars, uh, had we not have had this support, or there are many, many qualifications in this, had we been not from this privileged class. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that ki we are a privileged lot. And uh, I don't think uh, someone educated in Stevens, someone coming to JNU after that, even he being, I mean, he did his graduation in DU, came to JNU. I think uh, th these are privileges. 98% of this country don't ha don't ha doesn't have those privileges. Uh, the fact that ki both of us were not Muslims from Azamgarh, both of us were not Muslims from Bijnor. Uh, the fact that ki Umar was is not a practicing Muslim. Uh, what if he was? These are questions. But the point is that ki, these things did determine to a large extent as to what happened with us. It could have been worse. And I think it is our privileges that also came into being uh, and the support that we had. I do not know a random person. Uh, we, we have seen what was made out of Umar and how easy it is. How easy it is to say this and that and Jaisha Muhammad and Pakistan and all of that. But when someone is picked out, picked up from Azamgarh or Bijnor, uh, 
just like him or just like me i don't know how much of a support that person would have behind him or her uh, and i think interrogations would be even more uh, even more horrific in those situations i th- it was intimidating quite intimidating um, humiliating but it could be worse following up with what you just said about the fact that i mean just your names you have a muslim name you don't did that come across in the way you guys were treated when you were in custody was that something that um, you know affected the way that they treated you mm, see i think we've already said that the day when we came back also i was khalid sahab he was bhattacharya ji in jail and this perplexed them that what is bhattacharya doing here with khalid sahab khalid sir khalid bhai and khalid bhai and that what he was told in one of the aside conversations the policeman had with him that him doing it's understandable why are you into it he asked him why are you saying this because he's a muslim no 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 i'm not saying that i'm not saying that but the point is that they, we know what he was saying and similarly i also used to be given uh, these lectures on how there are good muslims also and how there is a patriot there there are patriotic muslims like apj abdul kalam and they would take references from their friends and how good they are there was one police officer a muslim police officer in special cell so they would say that look at him he says one day mataram and bharat mata ki jai every time look at you tum log to jis thali mein khate ho us thali mein chhed karte ho and all of these things islamophobia was at its best during those interrogations but the point to be made here is it was not just the police which did that the police we know as anirban has also said uh the record of the police in terms of let's look only at that special cell it deals largely with terror cases 70% of its terror cases quote and quote end in acquittal to put it differently 70% of the people they catch they frame and they torture they do all of that and all of that also it's become so normalized and what we could uh, see uh, in our interactions them very internalized to their way of thinking so there's so much of hatred that even if you're beating up a person you knowing very well that he is not involved that's completely fine uh, but beyond that there was also something more sinister which was the role of the media and when i say the police and the media i don't think the two of them were acting independently of each other uh, the fact from 10th of february the way the media trial began and different news channels uh, coming up with similar script save subsidy you guys take subsidized education you guys are wasting the taxpayers money why are you guys into politics you guys are supposed to study anti national the kind of taglines that the different news channels are playing afzal league afzal premi gang pro afzal group i don't think the media was acting independently a section of them i don't think a section of that media which was doing a vitriolic media campaign against us uh they had instructions from above which was reflecting in similar scripts being play, played out on the fourth and the fifth day uh after kanaiya's arrest when they brought this jaish mohammed link it was newsx which brought that uh, in the beginning it created a different impression altogether newsx not only played that on its television they retweeted it the one entire day so so much so that it was to the top trend in twitter for one day that umar khalid is was jaish mohammed sympathizer who is one of the genius students who did the afzal xyz program and that had changed perceptions completely even though the fact that government had brought a report the next day saying that there is no ib input like that the media did not issue a disclaimer let alone an apology did not play any disclaimer on its television and it created to perceptions being already made and the perceptions were already made and which was reflected in the police uh, interrogations the police operates with a lot of bias the police has operated with a lot of bias in all these years in the last 20 30 years ever since this war on terror has been played out uh what adds fuel to the fire is the media campaign the trial we were not arrested we were already branded certain things uh we were not interrogated even once it was already said it seems aajkal ulti ganga beh rahi hai matlab pehle uh the police used to investigate used to hand over uh the results of the investigation to the media and, and actually a good press should not even uh critic uncritically reproduce what the police is handing over they should also question it but that used to happen ear- earlier now is the other way around it seems the media does the trial hands it over to the police and then the police takes that as a point of departure and uh, goes ahead with it in fact in this particular instance that's exactly how it has happened and happened very blatantly very openly with media houses taking a lot of pride in the fact that they have done this z news has run channels has run as run shows saying that it was on the basis of the footage we provided it was on the basis of the interviews we did and the footage we provided of those interviews that these arrests have happened and when will more arrests happen so 
if there was a lynch mob in this particular case, the media was the biggest lynch mob. And who gives Arnab or anyone a right to call anyone anti-national? See, what Arnab has done and what this Z-News has done, uh, one of the reasons why after coming out we have not spoken to the electronic media because you never know, they'll play out one sentence, they'll not play out the other sentences. If you're saying something they don't agree with, they'll shut down the volume. And what you are trying to say and what ends up on the television screen is something totally different. And then they play it and replay it and replay it all for two, three days, creating a frenzy, creating a lynch mob around that. Now, because of the role of Times Now, Z News, it created a frightening situation, not just for me, but also for my family members. My sisters were getting rape threats. My father got a death threat from Underworld saying that he uh, will kill my father and me both. Even my 12-year-old sister who, does not, who could not initially fathom what was happening, she got death threats that will kill you as well. So this situation, if, if tomorrow something happens to any one of us, if something happens to me or my family members, is are all these media channels going to take absolutely any responsibility for that? And in this particular incident, it has come out. This is, as Anirban said, we have a lot of privileges by being JNU students, by being political activists who are very well known, who have been with students, who have been with different people's movements and who have a lot of contacts. Who, and these people who knew us could stand up for us. What if you were just an ordinary guy from a small town living in a Muslim mohalla? then there are very few people to stand up for you. And they've done all of this in the past, and it's happened too much, too many times. Media ethics, journalistic ethics, accountability have gone to the dogs. But this time, they cannot get away with it. They will have to answer for each of the things that they've done. Uh, I, we think that the order that we have had, I think uh, it it's a good order. Uh, particularly as in comparison to Kanaya's, because, uh, uh, I mean, there was a lot of conditions in Kanhayas and I think there were much more than conditions also in that mail order. Uh, I think uh, our order is a good order uh, and I think it also vindicates the things that we have been saying. It also vindicates the things that our the people who have been standing with us has been saying for all this uh, for this entire one month uh, it's a vindication of that and no it doesn't have those uh, silly conditions as has been put on kanaya of course we cannot leave um, delhi without the permission of the court and that too is regular uh, this entire matter did not even merit an arrest forget about sedition and everything so, uh, forget about spending time in police custody or jail. Uh, the manner in which it was uh, made out to be and what, has, what we have had to undergo, what even Kanaya has had to undergo, the conditions that has been put and all these things, it's rather unfortunate. And uh, let's see what comes across from here. See, Kanaya is the symbol of the movement. Kanaya is a JNUC president. Uh, he was the one who was arrested the first. He was the one who has undergone a lot of uh, a extremely traumatic experience in terms of the way he was beaten up in front of Patiala House Court and what he was subjected to. In terms of this debate, we became aware of this debate when some of us, some people came to meet us. Okay, Kanaya not doing enough, not there not being enough campaign, which we don't think was the case. Because if that was the case, what we heard, there was a march just two days back before, two, three days back before we were released. There was a huge mobilization of students once again. Of course, you cannot have the mobilization as you had in the first march uh, all the time because that was, it was still very, very, very fresh. But even this time, there were, the, almost the entire campus went out uh, in that march. There were people from different parts of the city who came out in that march. So, there was this thing that uh, he's not speaking about this, he's not speaking about that. You cannot expect Kanaya to speak about everything at this juncture. And it's not only Kanaya's responsibility also, there are so many others to speak about. And I think the way the unity, the entire student organizations, the students' union, the teachers' association, and not just uh, organizations and unions and associations of, Del of JNU, but of the city and beyond the city of the country and beyond the country, in different parts of the world, the solidarity that we have got, the unity that we have seen, it didn't end with Kanaya. The unity continued. I think the TA and the SU made it quite apparent in the beginning itself that we are not going to call this movement off until unless every student is released. Uh, and today, when we are out, that sh it shows it was only on the uh, basis of that unity uh, that we came out. So I don't think uh, a lot should be made out of these things. 
uh, it's been a difficult time for each one of us. Uh, each one of us cannot be expected to do all the things at this juncture. I'll just add on to this and uh, I stayed in Kanhaya's cell uh, after Kanhaya got bail. We were shifted. Uh, he left a message for me, uh, for us actually, uh, saying uh, India the largest democracy of the, of, of the world, let's think because equality is indispensable for democracy. Uh, we met once during the joint interrogation in Rakhipuram. Uh, what all we have had faced by then, Kanai had been facing much before us. Uh, he was the one who was picked up as JNUC president. The manner in which uh, he was handled in Patiala court, we only got glimpses of it through newspapers and uh, TV. Uh, beyond that, he was alone during that phase. Uh, the manner in which he stood up to the media trial that was going on, and beyond that, finally, when once we met for the first time during the joint interrogation, we got just slight, a little bit of uh, window space. Uh, after the interrogation, we could speak to each other. He told uh, Comrade, uh, we will all get bail. It might take a while, but we will all get bail because we have done no wrong. But meanwhile, you have four months for your PhD left. Come what may, even if you have to write it from jail, it is important that you write your PhD because you are a student as well as a political activist and you must do this. I felt really good about what he said. We have known him for a long time. Now we also know that the matter was subjudice. There was a lot of conditions on, on him. I think he was leading, after he came bail, he was leading the movement as the JNUC president. There was a march and many other things that he was leading. Uh, as a JNUC president, when he, once he was leading it, there were hordes of students and teachers who were speaking about us, even he was. If he was speaking less or speaking more, I mean, I don't think one needs to get into that. One needs to understand that the people whom he were leading did not have those conditions on them. He had. Uh, matter was subjudice. So, beyond that, I don't think one need. I mean, it's, I mean apart from that, there were others who were speaking about it and I don't think one needs to make an exception out of him and say that ki, whether he was saying enough or not. I think he did lead it as a genuine president. Um, we've heard a lot about um, Omar's family facing a lot of hostility during this time. Um, your father came out in support of you. I think he gave an interview at some point and he... Um, at one point. Did your family also face a lot of hostility comparable in comparable terms? Once this entire thing started post 11th, uh, what I got to know later once I met my father first time in the police custody, he was visibly shaken, visibly shaken. Uh, he was trying to put up a brave face but uh, it, it seemed he had aged two years in those ten days. Particularly the time that we were in hiding was most difficult for our parents. But uh, as I heard, apparently uh, this uh, there was a kind of social boycott of my brother's house uh, once my where my uh, parents were also putting up uh, for a time for some time. But difficult as it may have been for my parents, uh, difficult as it may have been, as opinions were generated. The, man, matter, the effect that media trial had on even neighbours and the neighbourhood. But uh, I think it is nothing, nothing comparable to, the, uh, to, to, to what Umar's family was facing. When in police custody his parents came to meet Umar, I also got to see them. They were braving it pretty boldly, I would say. Uh, the first interview that I saw of, I mean, this pathetic journalism that uh, was visible in that first interview in the manner in which the uh, person in the studio was talking to Umar's father um, and all of these kinds of questions it must have been so much so much more difficult for his his parents and as he was saying that ki, the death threats the, the rape threats 
the kinds of things that were being said about him and his family uh, and the kind of things that we have seen happening to Muslim youth in this country I think uh, uh, there were good reasons to fear because you don't need to do anything for something to happen to you particularly if you're a Muslim youth in this country but as I met them for the first time I found them to be much better shape than my father was and I think the reason behind that is as a as a community we have faced so much of targeting so much of witch hunt uh, so much of branding that it is his family that of course were facing the 99 or 98 percent 99 percent of the of the threats and the targeting much more than I mean nothing comparable to what my uh, parents or family had been facing but at the same point of time a community that has seen so much of this happening of course no one can be ready or prepared enough to face that when your own son or daughter is involved no parent can do that but still as a community I think they have seen so much of it around I mean they stay in Zakir Nagar they have seen Batla house they have seen so much of it around them I would say that ki, they were to some extent bold enough to face face that then I think a middle class Hindu upper caste family who doesn't know what witch hunt means I mean, what what is the W of witch hunt? So I would say, and I think both the families gave each other support in this difficult time. Uh, I'll just pick up one small point which you also said. Just repeat that. Uh, this paradoxical situation that we are facing, that a Muslim name uh, arouses more vitriol and uh, a more vicious uh, media trial, uh, but it, <coughs> and as compared to a Hindu name uh, but at the same time uh, something like Anirban's brother's house being boycotted by neighbours and a completely opposite thing happening with my, where my family stays in the neighbor, neighbourhood around a sense of community feeling taking, taking over uh, where a sense of solidarity coming in at that time look it's happening to this person's son and we've seen this happening again and again uh, with Muslim youth uh, and it's happening to his son and we have to go and support him. So rather than a boycott, you'll have more people coming to your house, people whom you have not known coming and expressing solidarity, which happened uh, coming and expressing the support, uh, expressing this desire to uh, 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 asking my parents if you need anything, call us at any point of time, we, we are there. And so many people standing. It's a paradoxical situation uh, where uh, people come out in support uh, if, and that has to do a lot with what has happened in the past 20 years I mean if we make take it beyond just our families and what we went through and if we speak in terms of why was it happening uh, people have seen this happen enough too many times and a sense of a persecuted community even when I met my family members after coming out the kind of how emotional they were imaginations run wild it was this entire period was more difficult for them than actually it was for me uh, the, especially the time when we were hiding from the lynch mob and not from the law the, their fear of me being picked up kept in illegal custody being produced in some unknown location somewhere they say they take me to Jammu Kashmir they show me arrested from there and these things have happened they'll pick you from here they'll show you arrested from there the fact that they'll pick me keep me in illegal custody and they'll torture me like anything and make me sign confessions the fact that I can be encountered it has happened with so many people they, the same kind of fears overtake you and that leads to these paradoxical situations that uh, the greater the witch hunt, the greater the fair. Because the fair is a collective fair. It's not a fair of one family. It's a fair of the community. Whereas in a different uh, context, it can be a fair of one family and other families trying to dissociate from that family. Okay, this family is the uh, uh, whose son has gone wrong. On the other hand, the, uh, the impression is that, okay, his son is being wronged. So, these are the paradoxical things that are there in a society. But paradoxes of our times, amongst the many. I just, I just wanted to add that ki it's not the entire neighborhood. There were exceptions yeah. who stood by. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Kashmir. I was going to come to Kashmir. So, there are a lot of people out there. First, first. Not that it really matters, but what are your views on Kashmir? Because there are a lot of people asking. And secondly, there are a lot of people who feel like you weren't diplomatic enough about your views and somehow that you should have been that you should have recognized 
where you're coming from and that you should have been more diplomatic about your opinions. What do you have to say to that? In, 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 in specific, of in terms of your background, specifically you. What do you have to say to that, to that argument that you should have, in cognizance of your own you know, identity, where you come from, been a little more diplomatic about expressing your opinion? I'll answer this diplomatic part first. Uh, see, that's one of the very unfortunate uh, things that are there in a society where you think you have transcended your identity, where you think you have moved beyond your identity. And moving beyond your identity, you have taken up a political position on various issues and not just on Kashmir. From a very Marxist-Leninist point of view, from a communist point of view, and that's what I've done for the last six days, six, seven years. Not just on Kashmir, on any other issue. It's come from a very Marxist point of view. Even on minority witch hunting, I'm not speaking as a Muslim there. I'm speaking as a Marxist there. I'm speaking as a communist there. But unfortunately, the thing that is there in our society is that even if you think you have transcended your immediate identity, there are moments to quote Rohit Mula when you're reduced to your immediate identity. And this was one such moment. And even there, in police custody, for example, I mean, it happened in the media. We've just spoken about that. Uh, this policeman saying that, okay, Khalid kar raha hai, samaj maa raha hai, lekin Bhattachari ji, aap, aap hi position kaise le sakte hai? And when he asked, mein kaise nahi le sakte, kyun, woh musulman hai, kaise nahi pooch raha hai? Nahi, 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 mein to ye nahi bol raha hai, then the police comes up with a very embarrassing uh, defense of that. But, we need to think about these things. Uh, is someone coming from a particular background only supposed to speak things about that issue, uh, issues pertaining to those things? Is Kashmir a Muslim issue? Uh, or is it something else? I don't think it is a Muslim issue. Because if Kashmir was a Muslim issue, then how do you look at Manipur? How do you look at Nagalim? They're not Muslims living there. The, 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 the problem that Manipur and Nagalim are facing, the problem Kashmir is facing, I think there is more similarity between them than the issues Indian Muslims and Kashmiri Muslims are facing. So, I think there is a problem in looking at Kashmir like that. And there is a certain projection of it. It delves very perfectly well within the larger Islamophobic uh, campaign that's been going on ever since the collapse of the Soviet Union and Islam replacing, repla replacing communism as US is enemy number one, more so after 9-11 with this entire war on terror, Iraq, Afghanistan wars and all of these things. So the point is as critical people, as, as students in a university space and not just as students in a university space, as justice loving people, one needs to try and look beyond this propaganda of the state machinery in India as well as globally the kind of propaganda that is there around Muslims, around Kashmir, around all of these questions. A lot of things baffled the police because they don't, they know, they know nothing about JNU. There is just prejudice. They don't know the fact that pamphlets is a regular thing in JNU. It's not something like we are saying pamphlet likha tha. So pamphlet to is like every second day we bring out a pamphlet. Uh, poster chapa tha. Poster kaha se chapa? Like poster to we bring posters every day. So when pamphlets and posters, well, see one of the charges against us is criminal conspiracy. So if bringing pamphlets and posters is part of a criminal conspiracy, then it's a very, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, what is that? What tragic comic uh, uh, yeah. situation? It's a theater of the absurd that was going on. So they were baffled by these regular things and things students do regularly in JNU, which they have absolutely no clue about and that, that only baffled them. So when we, whenever we are talking about, for example, I will give you a very funny example. They asked us what happened uh, on 9th of February. So I recounted the entire turn of events. After that I said that around 8.30 it was over and 9 o'clock we had an all-organization meeting on a different issue around uh, student union elections. And what would be, uh, I said there was an AO. Uh, and what should be the uh, guidelines for the students' union elections? He said, what's an AO? I said, an all-organization meeting. What is an all-organization meeting? He said, all-party meeting. And what is an all-party meeting? Then someone said, aray, aray, sir, wo JNU ka huriyat conference. <laughs> so, the point is, they know nothing. These are usual things and that is what was baffling them. But the point that is important here, it might have baffled them, but about knowing nothing about JNU. But what one saw in terms of their attitude towards JNU, is a lot and lot and lot of prejudices. Similar prejudices operate when you, uh, it's a Muslim guy here. Uh, they knew you guys do nothing. You guys don't study. You guys are only interested in politics. If you want to do politics, why don't you quit JNU and join mainstream politics? Uh, and uh, you live on subsidy. You live on taxpayers' money. You are picking one policeman came and said you guys pick up cheap issues like rape of women. Ninety percent of rape cases are false. Do you know that? 
सो मतलब ऑल द स्टीरो ऑल द प्रजिस पेट्रिया की क्लास कास्ट रीजन रिलीजन नेशनैलिटी एवरी थिंग परफेक्टली कोलेसिंग इन टू इच अदर एंड एंड आवर कम्प्लीट बींग कम्प्लीटली नॉन चैलेंट अबाउट सर्टन थिंग्स विच वी थॉट विच दे थॉट बिग कॉन्ट्रोवर्सीज ऑल्सो बैफिल दम अलॉट एज ही सेड दिस दिस थिंग वॉज इन दोज सामन सेशन दिस थिंग वॉज वेरी वो दैट की तुम लोग जेनू में क्या करते हो I mean, क्या है इन क्लब जिंदाबाद करते रहते हो ऑल ऑफ दैट सो वाई डोंट यू जस्ट स्टडी गेट इन टू ए करियर एंड देश के काम हो सो वी सेट दैट कि वॉट डू वी डू इन जेनू एंड वी एक्चुअली हैड दीज डिस्कशन सो फॉर इंस्टेंस एट वन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई सेट दैट कि जी न्यूज शोड समथिंग दैट हैज बिकम ए कंट्री वाइड इशू when my friends and comrades four of them got rusticated because they were fighting to ensure minimum wages for the workers that are working in this university in 2006 and that it was that struggle where thousands of students rallied behind them and by 2007 the minimum wages for these workers in this university was ensured did z news come and take that footage no i said that ki in this university it has the most inclusive and democratic admission policy people from the interiors of this country like vidarbha palamo uh, 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 interior parts of odisha jharkhand uh, maharashtra uh, they can come here and study because by a system called quartile points they are given five extra points women get five extra points there are 60% of the population student population is women these quartile points deprivation points even before reservation was implemented we had deprivation points for uh, oppressed uh, section people come from oppressed castes and obcs I, i say ki these are things that are not shown by z news and these are things probably that you don't know but the fact that ki it is us who are ensuring it university has not given this these are things that the teachers and students have collectively fought for and every year we fight to update the quartile points every year we fight to update the more amount of interior regions that we can reach out to we ask that ki these are things that happens in jnu are these anti national things for instance this so much that has been fed a constable asked me that baki sab to theek hai lekin ye jo 3000 condom mila hai milta hai har roz ये क्या है तो आई आस्ट डिम दैट कि आई डोंट नो अबाउट तीन हजार आई विल टेल यू समथिंग द गवर्नमेंट स्पेंड्स क्रोर्स ऑफ रुपीज इन एडवर्टाइजिंग दैट यूज कॉन्डोम्स हैव सेफ सेक्स इट इज आउट देर इन द टी वी एवरी टी वी एवरीवेयर द गवर्नमेंट इज स्पेंडिंग मनी गवर्नमेंट इज स्पेंडिंग मनी न अगर एक यूनिवर्सिटी में अगर वहाँ पर जागरूक लोग हैं इफ देर आर कॉन्शियस एजुकेटेड पीपल हु आर डूइंग दैट is that anti national or money is using condoms anti national or not using condoms anti national if so then you drop those advertisements those anti national advice advertisements that the government itself is doing so actually this person said that ki he thought for a while he said ki that makes sense aur waise bhi matlab 18 se 30 saal ke umar mein log sex nahi karenge ki 60 saal ke upar karenge and he actually said that ki yeah i mean bahut kuch aise bola ja raha hai bahar jo shayad thoda log soche to fir usme point hai and as i said that ki every person who was coming in would throw in a lecture of uh nationalism so even in for those 3 minutes that a doctor is coming from safdarjang checking our blood pressure and blood in those times 3 minutes also he will say kya karte ho and this and that this guy suddenly one day stopped him and said sir ji inke sath 5 minute baith jaiye aapko lagega ye sahi kar raha hai so if people hear if people listen it's not that difficult to communicate as to what jnu as what we are doing but if you have already made up your mind and that's what the media is has done whether stereotyping a skull cap wearing bearded muslim as a terrorist or a jnu person as an anti national it is so ingrained indoctrinated in people's mind it's difficult to get penetrate so anyways 3000 condom mila hai milta hai har roz ye kya hai to i asked him that ki i don't know about 3000 i'll tell you something the government spends crores of rupees in advertising that use condoms have safe sex it is out there in the tv every tv everywhere the government is spending money government is spending money now agar ek university mein agar wahan pe jagruk log hain if there are conscious educated people who are doing that 
is that anti-national or I mean, is using condoms anti-national or not using condoms anti-national? If so, then you drop those advertisements, those anti-national advice advertisements that the government itself is doing. So actually, this person said that ki, he thought for a while. He said ki, that makes sense. Or वैसे भी मतलब 18 से 30 साल की उम्र में लोग सेक्स नहीं करेंगे कि 60 साल के ऊपर करेंगे. And he actually said that कि हाँ, इन बहुत कुछ ऐसे बोला जा रहा है बाहर जो शायद थोड़ा लोग सोचे तो फिर उसमें point है. And this guy. And as I said that ki every person who was coming in would throw in a lecture of uh, nationalism. So even in for those three minutes that a doctor is coming from Sardarjang checking our blood pressure and blood, in those times three minutes also he will say kya karte ho and this and that. This guy suddenly one day stopped him and said, Sir ji, in ke saath five minutes bed jaye, apko lagega ye sahi kar rahe. So if people hear, if people listen, it's not that difficult to communicate as to what JNU as what we are doing. But if you have already made up your mind, and that's what the media is, has done, whether stereotyping. a skull cap wearing bearded muslim as a terrorist or a jnu person as an anti national it is so ingrained indoctrinated in people's mind it's difficult to get penetrate so anyways do you think those attacking jnu have achieved what they wanted what do you think the impact do you think the people who are attacking jnu i'm not going to say who's attacking jnu do you think they've achieved what they wanted to achieve do you think they've achieved part of what they wanted to achieve even if you know we feel that all of you being out even if the campus feels that all of you being out are victories do you think they achieve what they wanted what is the impact of this attack uh <coughs> it's a very good question uh see uh, to say to answer this in yes or no would be uh, would not capture the complexity of a country today the answer is both yes and no uh a country is characterized by uneven development so a thing can have one response in one part of the country and another response in another part of the country altogether uh it you might feel that uh sitting here in jnu or going to different universities of the country today that they've not been able to achieve we have we have shown them their place we fought back and we have won but in another part of the country you might go and you will find a different response altogether and that's both of the things have happened simultaneously certainly it's a major victory for us the way jnu was profiled the way even before the rs and all happened the shutdown jnu campaign had begun and it was not it's actually a very good question because it was not about one incident that happened on one particular day it was an attack on jnu and on an attack on everything that jnu stood for uh and we fought them back each of the lies we the uh, thread bears scrutinized them we rejected them and the students of uh, in the campus rejected them they were big uh in fact this movement brought a lot of people into active politics which now we as activists might not have been able to bring them into active politics so that these are big achievements of the movement at the same time what the bjp has actually been able to achieve through this movement and they've been trying this for some time it, is, it did not start with this movement they did the same thing with rohit vemula also uh, rohit vemula and his comrades in ambedkar students association in hyderabad last august when the entire thing started they called them anti national they called the university of hyderabad a den of anti nationals and they were doing that they did that again with jnu but the magnitude with which they did this campaign they found a new trope uh for polarization in this country which is the national anti national it's the same communal binary only but repackaging it as okay we are not talking about hindu we are not talking about our party's interest we are talking about the country's interest and country becomes brings becomes this abstract phenomenon where it's given meaning in this campaign by what the abvp and the rss want and the bjp want the entire sang parivar wants this country to be uh, that vision and this in this and in fact it's a much more deadly trope because unlike a hindu muslim binary the anti national also includes the enemy within like bhattacharya ji and many others uh and they've been able to achieve that so this is a new new thing that is emerging one might feel jnu was a, was a one one and a half months nightmare which has come to an end because students fought them well but this trope is being employed in different ways in different parts of the country so you have the bharat mata ki jai thing coming say bharat mata ki jai you have this delving very perfectly well into the earlier campaigns of against cow slaughter love jihad ghar wapsi so nationalism uh patriarchal control over women uh the ensuring the caste system uh ensuring communal tensions uh within the society all of these is like very perfectly coalescing into each other and creating a deadly cocktail of hatred in our country it will be complacent on our part to think that yes we've had major victories in this period but we have been completely victorious because major challenges are there in front of us in fact major challenges will begin after the entire thing will end in jnu 
right now we are fighting to scrap the sedition charges we are also fighting an internal inquiry committee here the high level inquiry committee but beyond that even if we are victorious and we will be victorious in that uh, we will continue our movement in that what this movement this historic movement is going to give to the society will be determined in terms of how the people who have got involved in this movement move beyond when this movement comes to an end and look at these different issues that are that will continue to plague our society and these myriad forms of oppression the positions they take the fight backs that they do there and those fight backs are very important and what we feel is that one thing this gum i mean what it did as you asked that ki whether they succeeded first question is that ki what is it that they want to succeed in uh budget session was coming up two years has gone achhe din and unemployment and uh, this and that and uh, this uh, farmer suicides and everything many things has been going on many things has been plaguing there is a frustration there is a disillusionment with this promises that had been made uh i mean as it happens every five years once things change in this setup but uh, uh i think if you have to make an irrigation canal if you have to generate employment if you have to ensure uh, uh, mid day meals all these things require investment just before budget i think jingoism comes for free you don't have to invest so this is the easiest way where all those frustrated people suddenly will stand behind you because you will create an imaginary enemy so jingoism is something that can be that can be just ignited out of the blue and suddenly you polarize and sometimes you polarize by doing muzaffarnagar sometimes you polarize by doing this and certainly there are electoral dividends that are being sought after there was a certainly a script a completely well written script it was orchestrated with the active support of sections of the media police uh starting from rss till the goraksha samitis in munirka i think it was a well organized and they are pretty well organized organized uh, assault assault on jnu not just jnu assault on jnu because if someone and none of our, our teachers none of our students are actually in any illusion that this was about the 9th of february because as we saw in the tv channels mahishashur kiss of love khule aasman ke niche log ganga dhaba mein kya kar sak kya sab karte hain and condoms and this and that and uh, so the 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 sense of jnu had been uh, accumulating over some time standing with every people's movement of the, in this country in every nook and corner standing with every student issue starting from penjra to to stand with Ro- uh, justice for rohit to ho color of to every other thing that has been occupy ugc uh, uh, speaking up against the bogey of love jihad and so many things is questioning the rss questioning the government putting the most effective and articulate uh, opposition to rss and uh, modi so uh, as the panchajanya article in the organizer uh, which had identified already in a year back jnu as a den of anti nationals and this thing and that thing so this was coming for some time so if it was not 9th it could have been 10th so that it was a proper well planned attack not just on jnu but every <coughs> such university that is giving the, the, where there is a political churning anti national was not a branding that started with jnu anti national had started much earlier anti national had was was the thing on which rohit demula's murder happened Rohit Vemula was branded as an anti-national. Rohit Vemula, after that, was institutionally, orchestratedly murdered, uh, and because he chose to fight back, uh, fight back. Now, there is an effort to curb upon every such university space, not just JNU. Finish the autonomy and finish the pol- politicization of every such uh, and democratic space of every such universities, uh, not just JNU. So yes, there was a plan, there was a script to it. but as we know you have a plan it glows according to the plan to some extent you are trying to put the plan into force but as we know as per dialectics there is because you are going ahead with that there are certain other things that start happening which goes out of the script also so yes they have gone with the plan they have polarized uh, they have been also successful in doing that but also there are certain other things that has also happened that was not in the plan 
Now, as when Annahazare happened, Arvind Kejriwal was not in the plan. It happened. It came out of it. Uh, certainly, once they started with this entire script, the Kanahiya speech after Bail was not in the plan. Of Venkaiya Naidu or Rajanath Singh or Nagpur. Uh, Nagpur. Now, yes, they did that, but the immense, unprecedented solidarity. I mean, even till yesterday, there is a there is an Azadi lecture that has been started. Path Chatterjee was here. The un it's still going on. It will go on for some time. The unprecedented solidarity that democratic sections, students, and teachers have shown is not just heartening and uh, emboldening, but these are things that are going to go down in history. Fascism is a very populist force. It came with populist support under Hitler also. There is no qualms about it. But it is during those times who stands up to it is what will be registered in history. And I think these people, we, JNU and all those people who are standing with JNU is going to go down in history as to when fascism was on the rise who opposed it and the, these will have its own impact as to how the country's future will be in the days to come as to whether we stand up now or we don't and I think yes they tried part of the script was also for instance some people said that part of the script and we know that was to bury Rohit Vemula but I think whether one is being able to bury it or not doesn't depend on the ruling classes or on their plans it depends on what we how do we respond to that kind of a strategy? And I think the plan in that context miserably failed because I think Stand With JNU and Justice for Rohit together marched to, on the streets where thousands, it swelled and merged together. And I think uh, the fight for justice for Rohit was only in the path of struggle and that is precisely why these two streams merged together because ultimately the enemy is the same. And I think on all those counts, the plan miserably failed. They started saying that, so, asking us in front of Kanaya, what was Kanaya's role? So we said, Kanaya, and we've said this earlier also, Kanaya is the genius president. We try, we, he was not there, he came towards the end. Uh, when things were coming to an end, he was trying to separate <coughs> ABP from the rest of the people. He said, no, but he's the president of JNUSU. Why did he give permission? I said, no, sir, JNUSU president does not give permission. It is the authorities who give permission. JNUSU is not an administrative body, it's a body to fight the administration. He said, no, he's the JNUSU president, he's the one who gives permission. And I said, sir, see, Kanya is sitting here, he's the JNUSU president. He's not the president of the United States of America. So he's not the one with absolutely any power. He's a body meant to fight power. But these small, small things, uh, many things, uh, on one hand, they'll talk about Desh ki akhandata, Desh ki ekta. Then on the other hand, the special would refer to the Naga Battalion as the savage others. Okay, don't go there and look at them, they're so deadly, they're so dangerous. They eat human beings. And so, and the very next breath, he'll talk about Bharat, Bharat ki ekta and akhandata, and which we have actually uh, threatened by uh, through our political opinion. So, all these contradictions of Indian nationalism, you saw everything, you saw all the prejudices. And these prejudices, for our safety's sake and for our security's sake, we did not reply to while in custody, but now we can laugh about those things. And for example, I've read this book by Arun Ferreira, Colors of the Cage, where he talks about uh, how during his interrogation, the seniors used to interrogate him, torture him, and do everything. At night, when the seniors would leave, the juniors would get an uh, the juniors would get an opportunity to show that okay, we also we are also there, and they would show their authority by doing everything that the seniors did. So that they get an ego massage out of that. We saw that first hand. After the seniors would leave, then the juniors would start. Pata hai, 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 hai. So this is their time, this is their moment to show their authority. And what better way to show their authority than to sort of humiliate us, insult us and all of these things. Um, this uh, ludicri ludicrity, I think, has been covered by him. If it is the last question, then I would say that ki, I'll, I'll say that ki, yes, it was a an experience, most of it intimidating, quite a bit of it humiliating, some bit of it scary also. Uh, yes, it was an experience also which was very rich. There is a lot that we have taken back from those experiences. It was a rich archival material as a student of history. Uh, 
there were also some moments that we still carry which were different if i am allowed to talk about that then there were also uh, then uh, there were also guards as i said uh, who would listen who would talk uh, whom we started talking with and who we know who said that who would miss us once we are gone uh we have also been said that ki you are the best people who have met, we have met in last 6 years of duty uh i remember um i think you would know that the art of living show ke din pe barish hua tha it was raining a lot so i was sitting outside right at the near the bars and i was looking at the rain and suddenly this uh, guard comes up to me and gives me a paper boat and i still have that paper boat and while coming back someone gave me this fountain pen uh as a memory and these are things that has also happened i mean exceptions may be but these are also things that we take back with us and uh, there has been such nice and light moments with people over there thank you so much thanks for your time